anyway, where was I? Another week of a how-to video, and this week, as you can see, we are going to be learning about saws. The how-to will be on the humble handsaw, but what I thought I'd do is take you through all the other types of saws that are around. Basically, they all do the same job. They're cutting either a piece of wood, a piece of metal, or some plastic. So, what are the main jobs for each of these pieces of equipment? I do love a power tool, and I will definitely get uh, a course together on using power tools uh, safely, uh, exactly what they're for, uh, which ones to buy, all that sort of thing. So that will be coming uh, in the near future. Uh, so where was I? So yeah, the only, the only saw, the power tool that I don't have is a table saw. Um, I haven't really needed one yet. I've got away with using what I have, but I really, really want one, especially when I start building and making uh, my own furniture and, and, and things like so that. So this big beast is known as a, it's got a quite a flash name, it's something like a uh, compound bevelin mitosaur or two-way two bevelin mitosaur stroke chop saw. Anyway, what does it do? It chops up pieces of wood, pieces of metal and pieces of plastic. Uh, the great thing about this is it does some great mitre cuts. So it does a mitre cut this way and a mitre cut this way at all different angles, which is on here. It does beveled cut, which is cuts like this. And it also does the straight down cut, which is the chop saw. And I love this, absolutely love this. The next one I want to show you, this is known as a circular saw. And this is great for, uh, I didn't tell you what that was for. That's for chopping up smaller pieces of wood. You want um, uh, constant cuts of the same sort of size and smaller pieces of wood, planks of wood, small planks of wood. That's what this was for. But if you've got a big sheet of wood, a much bigger sheet of wood, and you're thinking, I could use a handsaw, but it could go off and you need an absolute straight cut. The circular saw is the one to use. This particular one uses a track like this that it sits on. This sits on the wood and you get absolute bang on straight cuts, which is great when you're making furniture and that kind of thing. This is another favourite of mine. So this is like a mini circular saw and I absolutely love that. So when I've got smaller uh, pieces of wood, sheets of wood, I will use this before I would use this because this is heavy. Moving on, we've got one that you're probably familiar with, which is the jigsaw. Excuse me, coffee. Keeps me going during the day. Uh, although, to be fair, I think that's DK. The jigsaw, so this is used for more uh, precise cutting, scrolling cuts, shapes, that sort of thing. And then this one on the end here, this is called a reciprocating, a reciprocating saw. Um, and this is great for demolition. You know me and demolition, I was telling you the other week about the lump hammer. Well, you can use this for chopping stuff up. Um, it's brilliant. And this particular blade is for cutting metal. I was dismantling a massive old workbench the other day and there were some big old um, metal nails in there, uh, screws, and I couldn't get them out where they were so old. So I just chopped them up with this, which was brilliant. So this isn't precise cutting. This can go sort of all over the place, but this is good, especially if you want to make pallet furniture, which we'll definitely get onto one day. This is good for dismantling old pallets so you can make furniture out of them. Uh, so yeah, different interchangeable blades, so a reciprocating saw, it's another beast. So moving on to the hand saws. The general hand saw that you'll use is gonna be this type of hand saw. This is what you're gonna be used to. 
you can get them in all different sizes and there's like a first fix and a second fix which is a uh, plummeter is a carpenter's term uh, a first fix is more uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, wood that's not as smooth plain so it's not plain so it's rough sawn wood rough sawn wood that you're using uh, that um, carpenters I can't get my words out today which carpenters use when they're uh, building um, houses that sort of thing all the carpentry in there the first fix is a structural and then the second fix which is a smaller teeth which is more for finer work would be for the planed wood uh, but any sort will do if you're cutting up for, um, pieces of wood for, for DIY projects you can get what's known as the toolbox uh, hand saw these are just a little bit smaller and they fit in a lot of the gen oh excuse me that coffee is repeating on me okay this is for your general size toolbox which is really handy especially uh, if you're out on a job like I have been as a decorator and also you can get covers that go over these uh, teeth because they can be quite sore uh, quite sharp sorry um, and the cut you so you always need to keep that um, protective cover on them unlike I have because I've lost all mine on any job could have been anywhere this is known as a tenon saw and basically this is for the more detailed uh, carpenter work so you would they would use this for cutting joints um, and for mouldings like dado rails picture rails a little bit more of a delicate thing and with this again it's a, a much um, closer together tooth edge so you can cut multiple materials with that this funny looking fella here is called a coping saw and again it goes along the lines of your jigsaw and this is for very fine scrolling work um, it's got this um, big shape here so you can get right into the work and you'll find that um, jewelers will use this silversmiths and that cutting out with the very fine edge so they can get really good delicate intricate cuts another one I use quite a bit is these two these are little hacksaws different kinds um, these are min this is a mini hacksaw you can get much bigger ones but these are really for uh, very thin uh, close together small teeth for metal and plastic plastic pipes that sort of thing and bits of chopping up bits of metal uh, again comes in lots of sizes uh, for me in the workshop I just use the little one for the most, most part um, and that's it I think that's it so what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks of how to use the uh, standard handsaw But before we do that and move on to the handsaw, I thought I'd show you my little obsession with vintage saws. Look at them. They're so pretty. Oh, I love them. When they've had a really good clean up, they are going to look fabulous. So, step one. How do we hold the saw? Again, something you might not know. Most obvious thing is you're gonna grip it. But again, this old index finger here is gonna come into play and your index finger is going to sit on that part of the saw because what it's doing is giving you that lovely straight line to saw the piece of wood. And um, some of the, there's always usually these days, a little built-in, uh, it's like a little sofa for your finger to sit to make it all nicer and comfortable as your saw. So, how do we start cutting a piece of wood? Well, firstly, make sure it's secure. So, either if you've got it in a vice, like I've got it here, or you could use some um, clamps. Hang on, one second, I'll go and get them. Back again. Uh, some great clamps here, so you can clamp it uh, down onto the surface like that if you need an overhang but you get 
you get the idea. And if you haven't got those or a vice, uh, make sure you hold it steady with your hand, but uh, there is a risk of it of it moving. So some sort of workbench is what you're going to need uh, to clamp your piece of wood to. And if you've got none of that, then just grab your partner and let them hold it. But uh, make sure they keep their fingers out of the way. So how do we start the cut? Well, we've got our hand in the right position. And basically, what we're going to do, you don't just go straight in, okay? Because if you do that, you're going to just get stuck, okay? And that's not good practice, and it splits all the wood, and it's just, it's just the wrong way to do it. So, what I want you to do is, I'll show you in a close-up in a minute of, of my actual hand. I'm actually around the wrong way to demonstrate that, which is a bit silly, so I'll do a close-up for you. But I'm going to draw the, the saw back about three times. So one, same position, two, three, and then I'm ready to go. See how easy that was? Now traditionally, uh, this type of saw, it cuts on the downstroke, not the backstroke. So the cutting will be on that forward stroke and you slightly lift it out on the back stroke. Otherwise you get, you get it cut and yeah, it's a bit, it gets a bit difficult. So I want you to make sure it's light. You let the saw do the work. You don't have to push down hard. And the saw in the cutting is on that forward stroke. something you might not know about the handle of the saw. As you can see it's got these two angles here and uh, you've got a 45 degree angle and a 90 degree angle and you can use this, it's been specifically designed so you can mark the angles on your piece of the wood. I shall demonstrate. So if you put this part of the, of the saw up to the piece of wood and make sure it's square you can then Use the metal part of the wood as a guide to make a perfect 90 degree cut. Similarly, similarly, you can use this angled part, making sure you're getting it. What am I doing? What am I doing? There we are. <laughs> it took a while, it took a while for my brain. Uh, to make the angle of, make sure that sits against that piece of wood, a 45 degree cut if you need to do any mitering. So, that's a little tip, that it's purpose made to make 90 degree cuts and 45 degree cuts. So to get a nice straight edge, a straight cut, because it's very easy to go off, to go off. So um, you're going to need like a set square or you can um, use the angle on your uh, saw, which is fine for the top cut. So let's just put that there. So we've got a nice straight line there for a nice 90 degree cut. And I like to um, draw round, I can't see, draw round the whole piece of wood that I'm working on as a guide. Because it just makes the job a lot simpler really if you've got a guide to follow when you're using a handsaw. Now, I don't use a handsaw a great deal, so don't have very good skill. Uh, so I need all the help I can get. If you're anything like me, my cutting skills, sawing skills are rubbish. Even with a line uh, to guide me, I always go slightly off. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let me just come around the camera. Can you see that? Look, I'm slightly off the line there. So another tip that we will help you is to get yourself a piece of spare wood and use that as a guide. So clamp it to the piece of work with the clamps I just showed you. And that way, if you've got something there for the saw to lean against like that, it's not gonna move about in that piece of wood and you'll get a much straighter. And so drawing round the piece, all the way round before you cut so you can get 
a nice line to start with. Again, same principles apart apply. You've got your line as your guide. We're going to keep it slightly. This is my um, piece that I'm going to be my waist piece. So I won't be completely on the line. I'll be just slightly to the side of the line on the waist side, using my thumb, pull back three times. I've got my line to guide me. And off I go. I hope that helped and, and you learned some new tips and tricks that you didn't already know. I'm going to uh, put this ugly thing down and uh, pick up some of these beauties and uh, start restoring them because they are beautiful. Right, what am I going to need to clean this lot up? Are you still here? Not watching this. Too much of a good thing in one day. No, 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 no. See ya.